Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. I'm not going to be rushed into having him testify so that he gets trapped into perjury. And when you tell me that, you know, he should testify because he's going to tell the truth and he shouldn't worry, well, that's so silly because it's somebody's version of the truth, not the truth. He didn't have a, a conversation. Truth is about, truth. I, I don't mean to go like. I, no, I it isn't truth. Truth isn't truth. The president of the United States says I didn't. Truth isn't I, truth. Mr. Mayor, do you realize what I, I, I no, I, no, no, this is going to become a what, bad don't, meme. Don't do, don't, do, don't do this to me. <laughs> don't do truth uh, isn't truth Trump, to me. Donald Trump says I didn't talk about Flynn with Comey. Comey says you did talk about it. So tell me what the truth is. Don McGahn might uh, know. If you're such a genius, <laughs> John McGahn, Don McGahn doesn't know. If that's the situation, okay. they have two pieces of evidence. Trump says I didn't tell him, and the other guy says that he did say it. Which is the truth? <sighs> Ready? It's Monday. Happy Monday, everybody. <clears throat> All right. What is truth, everybody? What is truth? Philosophy, uh, you know, philo ph <laughs> philosopher, it's hard to say, philosopher Rudy Giuliani. It doesn't flow. It doesn't, there's no flow to philosopher Rudy Giuliani says the truth is impossible to describe, uh, but truth is not truth. That's all we got from him. This week. You know, lies are not lies. Truth is not truth. Up is not up. Down is not down. Left is not left. Right is not right. It's all so philosophical. It's also open to interpretation. The universe has many arcs in it, and they all bend through some, some magical... So <laughs> Leave it to Rudy, uh, leave it to him on Meet the Press to, uh, you know, here you have the overly uh, agitated Rudy Giuliani blurting out truth isn't the truth and Chuck Todd actually telling him this is going to become a bad internet meme in like two minutes. And of course, uh, two minutes later, check my Twitter feed, everybody, at Randy Rhodes. I uh, created a, a meme. <laughs> Truth isn't truth. Uh, slavery is freedom. Uh, you know, it's just uh, well, it's unbelievable. This is this is insane, and we are at a critical moment. And you can tell because they're so freaking agitated. You can tell that this is a critical moment in the presidency of one reality TV star, Donald J. Trump, because. Manafort is on trial. His jury is out deliberating. We found out over the weekend that Michael Cohn is either about to enter into a plea deal uh, if he has anything interesting to tell Robert Mueller about Russia, then he will uh, be valuable to Robert Mueller in a plea situation, in a cooperation situation. If he doesn't have anything to offer Mueller, then he will, uh, you know, be indicted in the next two weeks on twenty million dollars worth of tax and bank fraud. This is his lawyer. This is the president's lawyer for his personal lawyer for 20 something years over here. Then you got one George Papadopoulos who was just, uh, they released his sentencing memo. Uh, Mueller feels that uh, Papadopoulos has not sufficiently cooperated and only when confronted with emails and intercepts and phone conversations and the cell phone itself and all this other information about the meeting that he had with one professor named Miss Fudd. Oh, my God, the names in this story just are endless. Then, uh, uh, you know, uh, that, and he lied. He had like four different meetings with Mueller's team. He consistently and repeatedly lied to Mueller's team until he was confronted with actual evidence that he had 
taken $10,000. Did you know this? $10,000 from a foreign government that he had met with this Professor Misford who told him that the Russians have dirt on Hillary Clinton. Uh, all of this. He just kept lying and lying and lying. And his girlfriend apparently was on the TV so much that the independent counsel didn't want to deal with him. And so now they have a sentencing memo that they've presented to a judge saying he's got to go to jail. Sorry, but Papadopoulos has to go to jail. So you got that going on over here. You got Rudy on the TV being, uh, you know, some sort of a philosophy major now. Truth is not the truth. It's some sort of a, uh, a, a, a ever mutating, you know, impermeable. You know, it's just it's not a it's not a definite point in the stars. It's not a definite thing. The fact is not a fact. It's something that's open to interpretation, depending on where in the universe you're standing and at what sunlight is shining on it and when or if it's in a shadow, then, of course, it could appear as being larger than objects in your mirror. I don't I don't understand what they're doing here, but they are desperate. They're desperate. Amorosa, she was on the TV this weekend. Uh, Joy, uh, you know, uh, Joy Ann Reed was on vacation. And so Al Sharpton sat in for her and uh, he had uh, Amorosa on there. And apparently uh, they go way back, way back. They're friends. And so she was very relaxed and she was talking to him and she said, you know, you know, and she said it on PBS, too. Uh, no, it's not just, uh, you know, it's not just that I recorded people with my cell phone or a pen, some recording device. It wasn't just that. I have videos. I have videos. I have emails. I have text messages. I got everything. And if that man doesn't shut the F up, I'm just going to release them willy nilly like the WikiLeaks thing. I mean, and she said Donald Trump is racist and he wants to start a race war. And I mean, this is just so unbelievable what is going on. So here we are at this critical moment, day 577, everybody, 577. And, and, and we're, 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 we're sitting listening to Rudy say uh, truth is not the truth. And that wasn't the most ridiculous thing he said. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. All right. Truth isn't the truth. We get it. The, the, the Trump administration has never believed in, in, in actual truth. They call actual truth alternative facts, right? They did yes, not they answer did. the question of why the president asked the White House press secretary to come out in front of the podium for the first time and utter a falsehood. Why did he do that? It undermines the credibility of the entire White House press office no, it on doesn't. day don't one. Be so, don't be so overly dramatic about it, Chuck. What it, it, you're saying it's a falsehood, and they're giving Sean Spicer, our press secretary, gave alternative facts to that. But the point <laughs> remains alternative facts? <laughs> alternative facts, four of the five facts he uttered. The hey, one Chuck, thing he why, got hey, right Chuck. was Zeke Miller. Four of the five facts he uttered were just not true. Look, alternative facts are not facts. They're falsehoods. <laughs> And then, of course, you had the president himself over here saying, uh, you know, uh, don't believe facts. You know, facts are, uh, you know, uh, not only fungible, but they're, uh, you know, it's a, it's a whole, uh, you know, different uh, universe that we operate in. Just stick with us. Don't believe the crap you see from these people, the <laughs> fake news. Just remember, what you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. Okay, he said that to the VFW, who then denounced him and said, um, you know, when the president says that the media is the enemy of the people, uh, we don't know exactly why he's here at the VFW. You know, we just uh, got to distance ourselves from that. But I just wonder how far this is going to go before the estate of George Orwell files copyright infringement on this particular admin. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just so unbelievable. The truth isn't the truth. Uh, he gave alternative facts. What you're seeing and what you're reading is not really happening. Do you know? I mean, uh, so so what are they doing? What is the point? What is the purpose of disinforming and disorienting the American people? I mean, it, it, you know, Rudy, is he randomly stepping in turds? Is he, you know, uh, uh, does he step in turds and then track it all over an already smelly White House. I mean, this happens far too often for this administration uh, to be stepping in random turds. It can't be random. Do you know what I mean? It's just so sick, okay? And today he tweeted, Rudy's trying to clean it up. He said, uh, honestly, honestly, you can't listen to, you know, if he's going to say the truth is not the truth and then start with honestly, then, of course, we have to ask the philosophical question, what is honesty? Honesty. It's such a lonely word. Everyone is so untrue. Honesty. 
<laughs> he wrote, honestly, my statement was not meant as a, pontific- a pontification on moral theology. No, I, nobody thinks it was a pontification on moral theology, Rudy. We just think you were yelling stuff like an angry old man yells, get off my lawn on a Sunday because you know, he has nothing else to do. But then he went on, he said, but one referring to the situation where two people make precisely contradictory statements, the classic he said, she said puzzle. And then he uh, got to the summation. Sometimes further inquiry can reveal the truth. Other times it doesn't. Oh, what is that? I'm in joy. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. I'm in joy's got nuts. Mounds don't. What is this? Sometimes further inquiry can reveal the truth. Other times it doesn't. So is it Rudy's job to make sure that it's another time and it doesn't? I don't know. I don't know. But I will say this. This is the most outrageous thing that he said, okay? Here, here is the, well, first of all, Chuck Todd said, well, what if Mueller's only measure <laughs> is who's been more honest over the years? We have a credibility gap between the two of them. You got to select one or the other. Now, who do you think Mueller's going to select? One of his best friends, uh, Comey, or the president who he has been carrying on a completely wild, crazy, is it possible, unorthodox investigation? Is it possible he makes a conclusion based on who's been more truthful over the years? <laughs> it's possible that he'll make the conclusion <laughs> on which of the two statements is more logical, which of the two statements has more common sense. Yeah, it's possible he can do that. Oh, he was giving me a headache. I mean, that pregnant pause there, you could almost hear his head saying to him, yell something stupid, Rudy, yell something stupid. Obfuscate, up, up, mud, mud of the water, mud of the water. Problem is there's no water, it's all mud, okay? And they sling it. They're just slinging the mud, okay? And incredibly, that was not the dumbest thing that Rudy said on TV yesterday. It was just the most succinctly dumb thing. But he tried to claim, check this out. And you know, this is so amazing, because Friday, I swear to God they listen, Friday, I went through the entire uh, 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 scenario about Donald Trump Jr.'s lies about the Trump Tower meeting. We went through the entire timeline of provable facts about the Trump Tower meeting. What day he was contacted, that when he was contacted, he was told that they wanted to send, that this was part of the Russian government's endorsement of Donald Trump's candidacy and that they were sending a Russian attorney to Trump Tower to deliver dirt on Hillary Clinton having to do with Bill Browder. That Bill Browder had given millions of dollars to Hillary Clinton, which turned out to be a bullface lie, right? Okay. But it was in the Rob Goldstone email. And Trump, within minutes, responded, if it's what you say it is, I love it. I love it. I love it. Right? Here's Rudy, uh, also on the same show yesterday, saying uh, this was the most insane lie. And, of course, any meeting uh, with regard to getting information on your opponent is something any candidate's uh, staff would take. If someone said, I have information about your opponent, you would take that meeting. If it happens to be from the, the Russian with government? A Russian, <laughs> she didn't represent the Russian government. What? She's a private citizen. I don't even know if they knew she was Russian at the time. Oh, my God. All they had was her they name. They knew she was Russian. I think they knew she was Russian. But Well, they okay. knew it when they met with her, not when they set up the meeting. Oh, my you, God. You told me, you, you asked me, you know, did they show an intention to do anything with Russians? Well, all they knew is that a woman with a Russian name wanted to meet with them. They didn't know she was a, a representative of the Russian government. And indeed, she's not a representative of the Russian government. So this is much ado about nothing. <gasps> okay, here's how it goes. The documents. June 3rd, 2016, email sent to Don Trump Jr. Couldn't have been more explicit. Maybe his recollection evolves. Maybe his truth evolves, but the, rec- but the emails don't evolve. Okay? Documents don't evolve. Here's what it said in this email. It said, the documents would incriminate, this is a quote, would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to the, your father. This is obviously very high level and sensitive information, but is part of Russia and its government support for Mr. Trump. Four minutes later, Donald Trump says, if it's what you say it is, I love it, especially later in the summer. Four days later, in a flurry of emails, 
Goldstone writes back proposing a meeting in New York on Thursday, quote, with a Russian government attorney. Donald Trump agrees and says, most likely I will bring along Paul Manafort, campaign boss, and my brother-in-law, Jared Kushner. Oh, my freaking God. And he, he, he does it again. So the only reason they could possibly want the president of the United States is because they're desperate for some kind of charge they can hang their hat on. They don't have collusion or conspiracy, <laughs> as uh, Brennan pointed out. And how, they how do don't you know have... that? Well, I, you say this always so definitively. How do you know they don't? I, I know they don't because, uh, look, this whole, this whole McGahn thing leaked from them. Mm-hmm. If they had, if they had a, uh, some kind of evidence that uh, there was collusion or there was obstruction, don't you think it had been leaked? I mean, they leak everything what, what, else. I mean, uh, they it, leak it, everything? I mean, like, let's talk with collusion. I mean, the Trump Tower meeting itself is at least uh, evidence of you better <laughs> investigate. It's, 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 not, it's uh, how is it not? Well, because the meeting was uh, originally for the purpose of getting information about about Clinton. The meeting turned into a meeting, uh, which in itself insti- it's attempted collusion. I understand. No, like, you just said it. It meeting was intended to get dirt on Hillary Clinton from a Kremlin no, lawyer. No, no, that was uh, the intention of the meeting. You just said it. That was the original intention of the meeting. It turned out to be a meeting about another subject, and it was not pursued at all. And of course, any meeting uh, with regard to getting information on your opponent is something any candidate's uh, staff would take. No. If someone said, I have information about your opponent, you would take that meeting. If it happens to be from the Russian with government? A Russian... She didn't represent the Russian government. Oh, She's my a God. private citizen. I don't even know if they knew she was Russian at the time. All they had was her they name. They knew she was Russian. I think they knew she was Russian. But well, they okay. knew it when they met with her, not when they set up the meeting. You, you told me, you, you asked me, you know, did they show an intention to do anything with Russians? Well, all they knew is that a woman with a Russian name wanted to meet with them. They didn't know she was a, a representative of the Russian government. And indeed, she's not a representative of the Russian government. So this is much ado about nothing. Plus, the president of the United States wasn't at that meeting. He didn't know about that meeting. Oh. He found out about it after. And by the time he found out about it, it was nothing. Let me ask so, you this. I mean, Let me just this, go back this, to the court. If this is their case yeah. for collusion, yeah. good luck, Mueller. Ah, oh, I can't take it. I, 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 first of all, they had her name. Her name was Natalia Veselnitskaya. You couldn't find a name that's more Russian in a, in a Dostoevsky novel, including the name Dostoevsky. That's number one. Number two, I just read you the email. The email. A Russian government attorney. A Russian government attorney. This is part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump. Make time for the Russian attorney. I, you know, I, I, he's supposed to muddy the waters, I get, but it's all mud now. There is no water. If it's what you say it is, I love it. I, I, I'm just surprised that Trump Jr. didn't answer in Russian. But then he would have to switch to his Thriller keyboard and it was probably, uh, you know, uh, crunch time. Plus, on June 7th, Donald Trump stands there and says, next week I'm going to have dirt on Hillary Clinton. No collusion. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.